welcome to another lecture of biology today the topic under our discussion is nutrition nutrition is a very vast term and this word is very commonly used in biology there is another word that is related to nutrition and that is called nutrients so in today's lecture we are going to talk about the definitions of the processes of nutrition and the term nutrients for the starting time i am going to tell you that what is actually nutrition so if we talk about this term we can say that all the living organisms have to eat something to survive the food that we eat or the food that animals use or the food that is prepared by the plants is basically a very important component of nutrition when any organism eats the food that food basically provides energy and growth to the organism the first important function of eating a food is that it provides us with the necessary energy that is required to perform various activities in the life and secondly for the growing body we need food in our bodies or in our diet to compensate for the loss or for the damage of materials that are being done in the body so basically what is nutrition nutrition is a process in which we obtain food or prepare food and then use that food for gaining the energy and for the growth purposes and for the synthesis of various molecules or various materials the process of nutrition involves the use of nutrients nutrients are those chemical compounds that are used as a food by different living organisms for example carbohydrate is an example of a nutrient and human beings use it as a food in the form of breads and cereals similarly another example of nutrient is proteins proteins are also consumed by the living things and then these proteins are used by the human body or by the body of other animals now we will discuss about the types of nutrition on the basis of mode of nutrition the organisms are widely classified as autotrophic organisms and heterotrophic organisms autotrophic organisms means the organisms that can prepare their own food in the presence of sunlight using the material that is present in the environment that is carbon dioxide water and sunlight usually autotrophic organisms include plants plants can prepare their own food and so they are called autotrophic auto means that they can do it by themselves and trophic means the levels of organization or the levels of feeding so autotrophic will be meaning that organisms which are able to prepare or which are able to synthesize their own food to obtain energy and for the growth purposes the example of autotrophic organisms is plants and some other organisms then comes another type of nutrition and that is called heterotrophic organization or heterotrophic nutrition now what does the word heterotrophic means it means those organisms which are not able to synthesize their own food they utilize the food that is prepared by other organisms or sometimes they consume other animals for their food so these organisms are basically performing the nutrition of heterotrophism so i am going to repeat the definition of heterotrophism heterotrophic organisms are those living organisms that cannot synthesize their own food they are unable to do so and for obtaining the food 
they take the food that is already prepared by the autotrophs or secondly sometimes they use other organisms as their food supplements the very common example of heterotrophs is human beings we cannot synthesize our own food in our body using the carbon dioxide water so basically we obtain food from two major sources the first source of our food is from plants we eat different kinds of vegetables and compensate it as a food secondly we also eat some animals and that animals are also a source of food for us these are the two basic types of nutrition and i hope this is clear to you now moving forward we will discuss about some nutrition in plants first we will talk about the nutrition in plants and then eventually we'll move to the nutrition process in the animals specifically in the human beings now mineral nutrition in plants plants can prepare their own food they are called autotrophs as discussed but sometimes the animals and the plants require some certain amounts of minerals in their diet so that they can get the necessary functions that are related to their bodies some nutrients are required in less quantities in lower quantities and the others are required in higher number so macronutrients and micronutrients are basically two different types of nutrients the word macro means higher or bigger and the term micro means lower or smaller macronutrients are those nutrients that are required by the plants in large quantities in heavier amounts for example carbon and hydrogen are the examples then comes the micronutrients now what does the micronutrients mean micronutrients are those nutrients that are required in lesser amount or in smaller quantities but smaller quantity does never means that if micronutrient is not present for a plant it can survive sometimes a macronutrient or a micronutrient is absent in the body of plant and as a result of which plants can face some abnormalities like some diseases or their growth is affected or their overall stock is also affected sometimes so micronutrients are those that are not available in high quantities but they are required in lesser number for example chlorine chlorine is an element or you can say it's a mineral and that is required in smaller quantities so chlorine is an example of micronutrient next i have shown a diagram or you can say a tree about the macronutrients we are going to discuss the macronutrients of plants and the micronutrients of plants in detail that what is the function or what is the role of specific nutrient in a plant body so i have selected four different nutrients that is phosphorus potassium sulfur and calcium uh, as you can see in the diagram that i have used the symbols of these letters or these elements so if you want to note them down you can note it down and in the next lecture we are going to study the details of all these four nutrients that why these nutrients are crucial or essential for a plant and what happens if these nutrients are in deficient amount or they are absent for a plant so i'm just going to wrap up my lecture now we have discussed about the process of nutrition and nutrition means the process in which we obtain food by either means or either by obtaining it by ourselves preparing it by ourselves or by obtaining it from other organisms and what happens when that food is entered in the body of living organisms it provides energy for performing the activities of the life and secondly it also helps in the growth purposes then we have discussed about the nutrients that are the basic component of the process of nutrition in the uh, upcoming lectures we are going to discuss about the nutrients in detail and what happens when a certain nutrient is absent in the body
Then we discussed about the two very important and very common types of nutrition that is autotrophic and heterotrophic. So autotrophism means that organisms can prepare their own food and heterotrophism means that the organisms are unable to do it and they obtain the food from the other organisms. Now in the end we discussed about the nutrition in plants that plants also require certain minerals in their diet. These minerals are sometimes required in higher quantities so they are called the macronutrients and sometimes we want these nutrients in lower quantities that are called the micronutrients. In the next lecture we are going to discuss about the four important macronutrients that are present in the plant body and their functions. Thank you.